I want to pay tribute to one of my invincible colleagues, Ash Denham, and her unswerving determination to end commercial sex sexual exploitation. And I pay tribute to Rhoda Grant too, um, and to other MSPs, including Ruth McGuire. Who and me too. I also pay tribute to these MSPs who've campaigned for the criminalisation of buying sex. That's in line with Scottish Family Party policy. So MSPs, I'm on your side here. I'm here to help. The way I'd like to help is by pointing out that some of the arguments you use in making this case are absolutely terrible. And I'd like to supply you with some better ones. The Scottish Government is clear that commercial sexual exploitation is a form of violence against women. Well, for a start, prostitutes aren't just women. The gay prostitution industry is far from insignificant. Prostitution is violence against women. Now, notice they're not saying prostitution can involve violence against women. Prostitution is violence against women. So if, for example, a, a university student goes to one of these websites that match you up with a wealthy gentleman who pays your university fees in exchange for sex, that is violent. It just isn't. This is grossly overblown rhetoric. The trend these days is for people to say that words they don't like amount to hate speech and actions they don't like amount to violence. And that's what we've got going on here. And it's the official view of the Scottish government. And it goes completely unchallenged at Holyrood, but it's just plain wrong. You can't misuse words for dramatic effect with total disregard for their actual meaning. For her fearless definition of prostitution, as violence against women. Fearless definition? What's anyone got to fear by saying that in Holyrood? Except possibly someone coming along with a dictionary. Equally Safe makes it clear that violence against women includes commercial sexual exploitation, including prostitution, lap dancing, stripping, pornography and trafficking. So just to confirm that the word violence has been used in a way totally removed from its actual definition, pornography and lap dancing amount of violence now, you may think they're wrong, but are they violent? But the problem is you lose credibility if you say things that are just obviously untrue. Surely the next logical step is to criminalise those who perpetrate this violence. That's very possibly the worst argument I've ever heard in the Scottish Parliament, and that's against some pretty stiff competition. So label something as violent that actually isn't, and then use that mislabeling as a reason to justify criminalising it the single root cause of commercial sexual exploitation, and that is male demand. No, it's not. Male demand is not the single cause of prostitution. There are basically two causes, if we're talking about male and female uh, instances. There's male desire for sex and there's female willingness to sell it. I did a debate about prostitution a few years ago, and I read a lot of accounts of prostitutes and former prostitutes, and they would explain how they look for business, for example, in hotels, looking people, for example, businessmen who might be on their own, effectively preying on men, not vice versa. So when a woman sets herself in, up in business as a prostitute, makes a website, uh, stocks you with seductive photographs of herself, does she bear no responsibility? Is the cause of that entirely male demand? Of course not. Now, not all prostitutes are made a free choice, but some do. And even those who are coerced to some degree into prostitution still contribute to generating demand. Now, saying that male demand is the sole cause of the prostitution industry is like saying drug dealing has a single cause, and that's the demand from drug users and addicts. It's complete nonsense. Now, of course, this is Holyrood, so we expect a simplistic feminism to be guiding the discussion, and that's exactly what's happened in here. Women have to be the innocent victims, and men have to be the baddies causing all of the problems. We really need to deal with prostitution in a way that has equality at its core, and to de decriminalise those who sell. Equality at the core? How does that fit with criminalising men who buy sex while decriminalising women who sell it. Now, criminalising the buying of sex, I'm in favour of that, fair enough. But why just the buying? Let's imagine a prostitute approaches a man unbidden, seduces him before he knows she's a prostitute, then he agrees to buy sex and she's delighted to get the money. So should the law look at that situation and say, he's broken the law, he should be prosecuted, she's done nothing wrong at all? How can it be logical to make it illegal to buy something that it's legal to sell. 
This approach doesn't have equality at the core. It's more like having pro-female, anti-male bias at the core. That as long as sexual access to women and girls can be bought and sold as if we were objects. Now, I'm not disagreeing with Ruth on this, but it needs clarifying. The argument as presented there is inadequate. Now, women's bodies are not bought and sold in prostitution. That's a common thing that you hear said. But the body's not sold because if you, like, you don't get to keep it. If you buy something, you get to keep it. So it will be hired. So the woman's body has been hired or a service involving the body has been hired. Now, is there anything inherently wrong about paying for a service involving someone's body? Well, there's not. Think of, say, a chiropractor. So there's got to be more to it than that. There's an additional reason why prostitution is wrong. Now, we also had the objectification line coming out. The idea that it's using a woman just for sex without regard to the wider aspects of her personhood. People make the same arguments about pornography. It's reducing the woman just to being a sexual object. Now, is that wrong? Is it wrong to pay someone just for one aspect of their uh, abilities, having no interest in the others? Now, actually, that's not inherently wrong. I pay a window cleaner to clean the windows in my house. Uh, I've never met him. Uh, I've got no interest at all in his uh, personality and his character and anything else about him as far as I'm concerned he takes some money and he cleans the windows now could you say am I objectifying him am I treating him like a window cleaning robot is there anything wrong with that well I don't think there actually is so if we want to explain the problem with prostitution we need to explain why sexual services in particular make these things wrong now our society is not very good at that because in general it's trivialized sex, so therefore it struggles to articulate reasons for the moral intuitions that we have about it. But sex should only be engaged in as part of a committed, loving, exclusive, mutual relationship. That's the teaching of major religions, that's the understanding of most uh, cultures, and I think it's people's moral intuition confirms that as well. So sex is much more than a matter of bodily sensations. It's got deep emotional significance. It engages the whole person and it shouldn't be. And in reality, it can't be divided from the rest of the aspects of personhood. And that's why pain for sex in particular is wrong. As we look at other countries, we can see clearly that those who prohibit the purchase of sex create more equal societies. Those societies have equal pay, equal maternity and paternity leave. They're much fairer societies because of it. Well, we've got two options here. Option A, criminalising the purchase of sex leads to maternity and paternity leave being equalised and it leads to the so-called gender pay gap closing. That's what Rhoda Grant believes. Option B, it's societies strongly influenced by feminism that tend to criminalise the buying of sex. I'll leave you to decide between those two options. When you leave here today, take note of the next 10 men you meet. What would it take for you to sell sex to them? How desperate would you need to be? And what price would you accept? Now tell me that that is a choice. Well, there's something in that point, but it needs to be clarified a little. Now, what Rhoda is basically saying is that most women would find prostitution repulsive but on the other hand, there's lots of jobs that people would find repulsive. What about killing animals in a slaughterhouse? Or jobs that people just would think, I could never do that. How about repairing cables at the top of a pylon? Being a combat soldier? Public speaking for some people, they would think, I could never do a job that involved that. Working in an operating theatre. Now, the fact that some people are repelled by the thought of a certain type of work doesn't mean that all should be, and it doesn't mean that that type of work is immoral. Now, the fact that 99% of women might say that's an awful thought to have sex with those 10 men to be a prostitute, that doesn't mean necessarily that the 1% who might say, well, actually, I think it's worth it for the money, are wrong. Now, this could be clarified if it's not just a matter of uh, repulsion and it's a matter of conscience. Uh, conscience is our intuitive sense of what's right and wrong. Now, women's conscience will tell them that working as a prostitute is wrong. It's an abuse of sexuality. Now, that's a better case, uh, but you need to be more explicit about that than just to talk about 
repulsion and revulsion. Surely it's a mixed message to say that it's okay for men to buy a woman in prostitution, but it's not okay for men to demand sexual favours to enhance a woman's career. Spot on. Good point. If prostitution was legalised, it would be okay. Would it be okay for a career advisor to recommend it as a job? Would it be okay to sanction somebody if they turn down work as a prostitute? I think they're really good points. I think I've heard those before somewhere. Now, where was that? Should there be a prostitution stand at the school careers fair? Should a person lose benefits for refusing to take a job as a prostitute? Should employers be able to add sexual services to other contracts, for example, to be a PA? Um, if a, a young person was homeless, is it ethically acceptable to offer them accommodation in exchange for sex? If we want to normalize prostitution, treat it the same as other, any other sort of work, surely those scenarios I've outlined should be perfectly acceptable. That's a clip from a debate I was involved in a few years ago with Rhoda Grant as well and a couple of prostitutes on the criminalization of buying sex and I think Rhoda has been stealing my lines. Mind you, having said that, I didn't make them up there from, uh, from this excellent book. So I promise to give some better reasons why prostitution should be criminalized. Now, the reasons I give here, they're not all completely untouched by the MSPs, but uh, here we go. Right, number one, prostitution harms prostitutes. It causes emotional and physical harm and also a significant risk of abuse and assault. And these risks are serious. These are not just occasional incidents. There are very serious risks of all of these harms. Right, reason number two. There's always a supply-demand problem with regard to prostitution because the demand of men for prostitutes uh, is higher than the number of women who will willingly submit to being prostitutes. So that always leads to a degree of coercion. And it tends to be vulnerable uh, young women, girls, particularly if they've been abused themselves. And that degree of criminality is present even where prostitution is legalized. There's still this supply and demand problem and criminal gangs step in to make money out of it. Right, reason number three, prostitution harms men. Uh, the temptation to gain sexual gratification with a prostitute will be resisted by most men most of the time. But the stress, drunk, lonely, amoral, might succumb and when they do there may be short-term pleasure but in the longer term there's often guilt addiction and relational dysfunction the inability to form healthy stable relationships in the future also the use of prostitutes affects men's attitude to women for the worse in quite dramatic ways and also increases the probability of them committing sexual crimes in the future and if that's not an important consideration i don't know what is right uh, number four Prostitution can harm families. A prostitute is effectively a serial adulterer on an industrial scale, and that can undermine or destroy marriages and families. That causes harm to men, it causes harm also to wives, partners, and also to kids, and then a knock-on effect, it has harms for wider society, and often with the states then having to pick up the pieces. That is a vital consideration. Right, number five. If prostitution is decriminalized, that can alleviate some of the problems. For example, the risk of abuse and assault could be decreased. But by doing that, you'd expand the market as the barriers to prostitution would be taken away, that more prostitution would take place. So there would be more emotional and physical harm to prostitutes, more harm to men, more harm to families, more harm to wider society. Decriminalization can't reduce almost all of the harms associated with prostitution. Criminalization can. If you reduce the incidence of prostitution, then these harms are reduced along with it. Now, people might say if you criminalize prostitution, criminalize selling sex, then vulnerable women who become prostitutes against their will or desperate to get out are going to end up sent to prison, etc. That needn't be the case at all. A lot of states in America, for example, where they have laws against selling sex. Uh, if a woman, for example, is arrested for that, then she's given the option of engaging with a program helping her to leave prostitution, or if she refuses to do that, then there will be criminal justice implications instead. Right, reason number six, ethos. We want to teach each new generation about healthy sexual relationships and stable family life. 
and that's seriously undermined by a society endorsing prostitution. A few years ago, there was talk of tolerant zones for prostitution in Scotland. I always thought, if you're going to have tolerant zones, how about the forecourt of the Scottish Parliament? Now, of course, MSPs would say, oh, definitely, no, 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 that would demean the institution. What sort of an impression would that make? Well, the same applies to the whole country. Now, one of the worst arguments people make against criminalising buying and selling sex is that, oh, it'll happen in any case. There's no point making it illegal. It's always happened. It always will. That's such a bad argument. It's unbelievable. You could say the same about murder. It's always happened. It always will. So what's the point about making murder illegal? Well, the point is obvious. It reduces the incidence of it. Now, in the Scottish Parliament, and a wider society, actually, prostitution is generally debated from feminist perspectives, and it amounts to a civil war within uh, feminism, with the decriminalisers and the criminalisers uh, locking horns. At the moment in the Scottish Parliament, I'm very glad to say the criminalisers have got the upper hand, and it's looking like there's a reasonable chance that they might win, and at least the buying of sex might be criminalised uh, within a few years. Now, the MSPs in this video, they might feel that with friends like me, who needs enemies? But I am on their side and I'm supporting uh, what they're trying to do in the Parliament. It's interesting watching the debate in the Scottish Parliament. There are no Conservative MSPs supporting, speaking to support the criminalisation of uh, buying sex, as far as I could see. And also, there didn't seem to be any men either. Now, all being well, if the Scottish Family Party's plans come to fruition after the 2021 election, there will be some men in the Scottish Parliament joining you, arguing for the criminalisation of prostitution. Just to finish with one last tip. When you're halfway through a video, let your wife know so she doesn't decorate your study. Okay, subscribe to us if you want to see more of our videos. Thanks for watching.